Uh, hey everybody, um, this is strange, but as you can see, um, I did my project on surgical oncology, and let me tell you, it was a wild ride trying to find just information on surgical oncology. But, uh, that being said, let's continue. So, the introduction of surgical oncology. Simply put, it is what it sounds. It is the surgical removal or debridement of tumors and cancers. Arguably, throughout doing this research, I found many people thought that surgical oncology is the most effective treatment of cancer, especially with localized cancers. And when it is combined with other modalities, such as chemotherapy and radiation, the chances of survival become even better, or chances of recovery, I should say. And in fact, um, in human oncology, 60% of patients are cleared of all cancer with just this modality, which honestly I think is pretty wild. Um, there's also the fact that surgical oncology is the simplest form of oncology, what I mean by that is that it's cut and dry, kind of, you get rid of it, you get rid of the cancer. Of course, there's more to it, and that by that I mean surgical oncology also has dose calculations like other drug therapies would, but it's a little different. This time, it's you determine the size and grade of a tumor, as well as its what type of tumor it is, if the uh, owner elects to do that. And there's only really two dose calculations. There's low dose, which are for smaller, less invasive, maybe not malignant, malignant I mean, sorry, uh, tumors. And they require smaller margins, meaning the amount of skin you take away around the tumor to ensure that you're getting all of the cancerous or tumorous cells. And then there's high dose, which require larger margins and can even require amputation if necessary. And these are typically for larger or malignant tumors and cancers. So what is it specifically used for? As I mentioned prior, surgical oncology is mostly used for localized cancers and tumors. It can still be used for metastasized cancers, but it's less useful because sometimes you don't exactly know where or how big that these secondary tumors are. And if you don't know those kind of things, or you can't remove the secondary tumors, then it's just going to come back. That's why most of the time when you use surgical oncology, you combine it with other types of modalities such as chemotherapy and radiation to ensure that you remove all of the abnormal cells from the body. That way the patient is cancer free. And I found a lot of discrepancy when it came to biopsies and whether or not they fell under the umbrella of surgical oncology. Some said yes, some said no. So I decided to ask around and see how professionals felt. And surprisingly enough, it didn't clear anything up. Some felt that it was absolutely part of surgical oncology because you need to know what kind of tumor you're working with to determine the best course of action for the patient. However, some people felt it falls under all modalities because you need to know what type of tumor it is regardless of the modality to have the best course of action. On top of that, they also felt that by definition, biopsies don't fit the removal or, um, what's the word, debridement of tumors because it just takes out a small fragment of the tumor cell that's not really going to do anything to help. So 
let me know how you guys feel about that because it's honestly I'm, I'm honestly kind of curious i'm under the idea that it's not specifically part of surgical oncology and that it's under the wider umbrella spectrum. Side effects and contraindications. So this is where surgical oncology can get a little bit tricky because many times surgical oncology, oncology is the only modality that clients can afford. And trust me, I've been there personally and in the workplace and it's, it sucks. Especially if the patient has a metastasized cancer, the removal of just the primary tumor might only improve quality of life for a little bit and may only lengthen its life by a little bit. And on top of that, while some surgeries can be performed, it doesn't always mean that they're indicated. It may be that a dog is eligible for a rhinotomy and curatage of the canine nasal cavity, but it might not improve the dog's quality of life. It may be better to just leave it alone. And lastly, age is not always a determining factor for surgical oncology. I know that my vet always says, you know, as long as the patient is in good health, its vitals are normal, its heart and lungs sound perfect and fine, an animal is great for surgery. Now, that being said, an old dog with an osteosarcoma may respond just as well or poorly as a young dog with the same cancer and treatment. So, there's not really any said or listed side effect or contraindication. It's basically what the, pay the owner can afford and how the dog, dog or cat or animal will respond to treatment. And if your pet has had surgery in the past, chances are, chances are it'll be okay. Otherwise it might not. It all just depends. Cost and convenience. As I mentioned before, surgical oncology might be the only affordable or accessible treatment for their pet. And you can go to regular clinics to have masses removed, but it's best that if the mass is cancerous that you see a a surgeon who is specialized in oncology um, to ensure that your, your your pet gets the best treatment out there. Um, and because, because you can go anywhere really, I wouldn't say anywhere, but you know what I mean, to get a mass removed, it does make it quite convenient for pay for clients to get their pay their their pets treated, um, and as you can see, I only have three places listed for prices. I called probably ten other ones. <laughs> On top of that, including specialty clinics that you know had specialized um cl uh, not clientele professionals within the oncology field but I got I got attitude from like everybody that I called or I was told oh yeah let me let me go make those um make that invoice for you so I can so I can, I'll, I'll call you back and then I wait and wait and then I call back the next day and get the same response and then never get a call back. They didn't care what my story was, you know, I told them. <laughs> I told them who I was, that I'm a student at SUNY Dalhine's veterinary student program. I was doing a project and they didn't care. So I, I was thankful enough to get at least three cl uh, clinics um, 
none of them are specialized clinics. They're all, uh, Bristow Animal Hospital actually is a VCA clinic. Um, that's probably the biggest clinic listed. Um, so as you can see, Better Lives Animal Hospital, uh, for a tumor or mass on the smaller side, it'd be about $500 and on the larger side, $1,000. Flushing Animal Hospital, $500 to 100, excuse me, <laughs> $1,500. And then Burstone Animal Hospital coming in at our most expensive, $800 to $2,000. Um, it's really hard to judge what the cost of a mass removal or a tumor removal will be because it all depends on the size, the type, the grade of tumor, you know, whether or not you want this kind of medication or that kind of medication and how much fluid does this animal need, you know. It's all very circumstantial and because of that you can't find any information online. When you do, it's usually like, oh yeah, here's the cost of surgical oncology and chemo put together. So you don't, but we're not going to break it down. So it's very, very hard to gauge how much um, surgical oncology would be so that I could tell you guys. But my poorly made <laughs> average cost based on my three clinics that actually gave me answers uh, is $600 to $1,500. Okie dokie. Uh, this is gonna be a little bit fun and weird and not really traditional bingo because I don't know how to make bingo, but I wanted to make something fun and interactive because these online presentations are new and we don't really know what we're doing and they're probably just going right over our head. So I wanted to see how much you guys were paying attention with a little bit of bingo. Now, there's three boards here. I will mark all of the boards for you, um, but you guys pick, pick a board, pick your favorite board, and uh, let's begin. Hopefully drawing, <laughs> hopefully drawing works on this, so Let's go. So our first question is, what percent of human cancers are cured by surgical oncology alone? I'll give you guys a second to think. That's right. It is 60%. Woo! All right. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget to mark our free space. I hope this is working. <laughs> Woo! All right. Well, this is why this is why it's not going to be traditional bingo because everybody already has two. Everybody already has just one left. <laughs> Next question: The average cost of tumor removal based off of this PowerPoint is what? That's right, you guessed it. It is six hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. And would you look at that? This middle board down here has bingo. Or we're gonna keep going so we can test your knowledge of surgical oncology. Question number three. Are biopsies considered part of surgical oncology? That was a trick one. It depends because there is no straight answer. And would you look at that? The board in this corner has reached bingo. <laughs> Alrighty. Next question we have is surgical oncology always indicated to improve survival? If you said no, you would be correct. And would you look at that? The last and final board has made it to bingo. All right, so let's keep going. 
because I'm having fun. And I hope you guys are too. What question? We're on question number five. Where is it? Right here. <laughs> what is surgical oncology used for? If you said localized cancers and tumors, he would be right. Oh, look at that. We're on double, double bingo. Oh, my goodness. All right. Next question is, does age affect surgical oncology procedures? If you said not always, you would be right. If your patient is healthy, chances are it can, it will do well. We hope. Question number seven. Is surgical oncology a very important modality for cancer treatment? Absolutely. So let's check off yes on all of our boards. And the last question. What are the two surgical doses for surgical oncology broad spectrum wise? I'm not going to give you guys time because it's the last question and it's low and high dose. That was a slightly interesting bingo, but I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. I hope you enjoyed my little effort to make it interesting. Um, and yeah, my next slide will just be my references. So if you have any questions, let me know.